Back. Well, we'll see you throw in. Gavin Kearney, one of the players that uh, hasn't been very prominent so far. McCart always getting the front position, but Dean outpointed him on that occasion. Up towards centre half forward. Richards thumps it back. Browning taken off the ball. It's underneath. Good tackle by Cullen. So Clarence working overtime in defence. And the umpires also certainly earning their pay. So bounce at centre half forward. McCartan. Fresh air shot missed. Blackaby at the bottom of the pack trying to somehow to get it out. Umpires let it go, which is great to see. And now the ball spills free. Hill round the corner to half forward. King. Oh, he made a desperate lunge, but he couldn't get there. Four minutes into the second term. Scores haven't changed in the grand final. Clarence 5 3 33. New Norfolk 3 1 19. And there's Dean King. He's already kicked one goal. Richards wins it. Gains some valuable time. It's been a good start for the second term by Clarence. They'll be happy if scores are level at half time. 55 metres out from the new Norfolk goal. McCart uncontested. Hill trying to control the ball. Appealing for a free kick. You're not going to get it that way, son. As Wilton, who's been fantastic, kicks the ball back into the centre of the ground. Blackaby in space. He's got time to steady. In towards full forward. Edwards needs support. Taken by Fry. Handball. Donato over towards uh, Noonan. Noonan out towards the wing. And sitting underneath that, Blair Brownless. Outpointed by Gurry. Gurry did a terrific job to get it out of there. Browning comes in over the top of Jones. And the ball will be wrapped up and balled up. Tell you what, the umpires have been good. Davo, they've continued this policy in the finals of just let it go. The free kick's down to a minimum. Yeah, great to see, Rob. And isn't the standard of football better? Dean won it. Plenty of players milling around for the footy. Brownless loses it. Browning again working hard, but can't break free. Thought Blackaby in that last instance perhaps had a bit more time. Could have gone for home if he... Could have done a lot more with it, Rob. Still, they're under enormous pressure, the players. Both sides have been tremendous so far. Great game again. Humphrey goes out towards Gurry. Here's Wilton. Close to best of field, Jason Wilton. That was an ordinary kick, however. And it's been marked by Wright, who was off. Hand passes it out to Danny Holm. Holm has McCallum streaming past. Now Clarence can mount something here. McCallum to half forward looking for Brownless. Higgins went underneath it. Cooney back towards Winter. Slapped out of his hands by Higgins was very, very good. But it's punched full of the open spaces. Richie creates a path, but he's lost it. Denneman been quiet so far, but off to Humphrey. And here come New Norfolk up and down. Oh, it's like a jack in the box, Dean Kent. What a terrific mark. Great recovery. He fights White at half forward, and White takes the mark. Really ought to be pushing the ball forward quickly. Eisel hasn't been in a What a great mark on the 50 metre line. Came from behind and snatched it out of the air. It's going to be a big kick, Bob. He's going to score a goal. He ought to be looking to spot somebody just a little bit closer, but uh, nothing's being offered in terms of a lead. Blackaby's broken free, but Hill not interested. Edwards needs to make a couple of efforts at it. It looks very much like he's going to have a go at it himself. Might be a chance. No one back in the goal square. Well, his kick's in line. It's going to the goals. It's not going to make the distance. It's actually well held in by, uh, by White. White tries to snap it over his shoulder. There's a mark, isn't it? Well, I'm not certain whether he got the fist on it first up. I'd say Fry probably had the fist first up, and uh, Troy White got it second time round. Good long kick, though, from Mick Eisel. Norfolk threatening, but can't make anything happen on the scoreboard. Clarence defending valiantly in this second quarter. Again, the umpires let it go, but they'll probably have to ball this one up. Still looking for a score. 5 3 33. You know, folk 3 1 19. That's how it was at quarter time. Hope you're enjoying the 94 grand final on ABC Sport. Edwards snapping the goal. It's very close. That's the Eagles' first great team lifting goal from Tim Edwards. And another snapped goal, too. I mentioned earlier at the break at quarter time that don't, uh, all bar two of the goals have come from snaps out of packs or off the ground or on the run. And another one there from, from Big Tim Edwards. And we saw him kick four in nine minutes in the second quarter of the qualifying final. And, and boy, do Norfolk need something like that sort of effort in this particular quarter so that they can take full advantage of the breeze. 
It's down in the centre of the ground. McCartan decisive. Richie intercepts. The ball's on the ground. Humphrey working hard to try and get that ball out. And the umpires will have to do it again. McCartan really uh, is giving Dean a, a torrid time. Although you must hand it to young Dean. Inexperienced, but really working hard. Up they go. McCartan. Holsworth tries to do it off the ground. The ball's underneath the pack. It flies free. Browning runs onto it. He's got a little bit of time. He's got Gurry in support. The handball's not good. And Gurry's going to have to work overtime. He turns back inside on his left foot up towards the wing. Sitting underneath the pack. Holdsworth, very good hands. Always a sure ball handler. And gets it off to Jones. Clarence threatening now from the centre of the ground. Cooney and Higgins. Won by Higgins. He outbodied uh, Cooney there. And it's mopped up by Wilton, who's having an absolute picnic. He's enjoying himself today, but he gives the ball away. Heard. Keen to play on, and it was well done too. Roll Ritchie, tremendous effort, eyes only for the footy. Back he goes again, Pete Ritchie, the powerhouse. Rob, one of the reasons why uh, Wilton is doing so well across that half back line is that he hasn't got a man to pick up at all. They've pulled everybody forward. Wade hasn't come off the ball. He hasn't manned up anyone in this particular, in the first 40 minutes of the game of football, and that's somewhat surprising, given the impact that Wilton's having on the game. Everyone enjoying the 94 grand final. It's a close one. Here's Wade, though. Wade for Clarence. Can blaze away from full forward. That's the target. Oh, Young did well to buck him off it. And the two former New Norfolk teammates going at it head-to-head. -head. Dax kicked just the one. That's a terrific contest, Rob. It really is. I was a little bit uh, doubtful about Young's ability to work with Dax, but uh, he's done a wonderful job so far. As Craig Stevenson kicks it out, it's a long kick out towards uh, uh, Humphrey. The ball goes forward. Quayle knocks it forward. Donato runs onto the ball. Cullen picks it up, breaks a tackle, handballs forward. It's intercepted. There's a flurry of players involved there. Cullen works out, working overtime. Noonan wrapped up again. The umpire really has thrown the whistle away. Richie tries to get himself out. He's caught with the ball, but the umpire allows him to get away with it. Young underneath the pack. Gurry. Donato, Gary, my word, umpire, blow your whistle. I think he might do it now. Oh, fantastic passage of footy. What about that? There were probably 38 free kicks in that frenetic <laughs> passage of play, and it was great to see the umpire let it go and let the players try and win the ball on their merits. Umpires Mark Williams and Greg Dwyer officiating today. McCartan claims it. Gets it to Denham, and that was perhaps too clever. Stolen by Jones. The snap and a full forward. Stevenson and Dak. Oh, Dak almost kicked the goal. I think it was over, though. It was. Stevie Wright kicked one like that in the first quarter. It was disputed in no uncertain term by Ashley Quayle, but the goal umpire said Wright had kicked it through. On that occasion, Dak couldn't do it. But Clarence threatening here against the breeze. And off screen, Michael Isaac coming off the ground, and uh, young Matthew Smith coming on for his first taste of a grand final. Kick up towards centre half back. Jones' kick has been smothered. The smothering of both sides, fantastic. Quayle blazes away to centre half forward. Hill goes at the ball. Winter goes at Hill. Does that say something? Tapped away. Picked up by Horn. Oh, Hill's dragged off a great tackle late on the scene by the veteran Scotty Wade. McCallum took a fair while. Umpire still let it go. Fantastic. Wade picks it up. Kicks under pressure. Jones, it's like a hot potato for him, but he picks it up eventually. Now Clarence on the rebound. Kicks the half forward, but it's been marked by guess who? Jason Wilton. It's his ball. He kicks it out and finds McCartan at half back. Williams McCartan. on the ground also too, Bob. So McCartan will take the kick from half back. He needs some running options. You Norfolk really have to work hard with the use of this breeze. Hull intercepts, Browning did it well, tapped it back, Humphrey fumbles, goes to ground, the ball wrapped up, it will be a ball up, Humphrey was away. I've got some very bad news for New Norfolk and supporters and tremendous news for Clarence, I reckon the breeze has swung around and it might be going towards the end that's favouring Clarence's end. Well, there as it the is. sock indicates, I think you're right, and Hull takes it, kicks it out of the pack, up towards the wing, Morby intercepts. Five goals, five, 35 Clarence. New Norfolk, 4 1, 25. Clarence haven't scored a goal in the second term. New Norfolk, just the one. White was the only bet for New Norfolk there. Clarence with numbers, and look at how they work it out. Richie to one of his best mates, Darren Winter. And last year's Darrell Baldock medalist coolly kicks the half forward, and he beautifully finds John Cullen. 
It's been a pressure-packed game. Clean disposal hasn't been the go. Oh, Richie took, just took his eyes off the footy on that occasion. Moonen tried to Shepherd, but no one was there for Clarence to go and pick up the footy. And Quayle sees it over the line. Done pretty well back there, Ashley Quayle. He's, uh, he's got plenty of pace. He reads the game fairly well and looks very much like that he's picked up Williams now. And Donato looks like he's off the ground. McCartan reading the throw-ins and the ball-ups a little bit better, always getting the front position. And if you saw just at the corner of your screen there, Matthew McCartan uh, gave away a free kick. And uh, that was courtesy of a forearm to Dean. Williams on your screen, just come onto the ground. So that'll be Dean. Kicks high in towards full forward. No one home for uh, Clarence. The ball taken. Quayle, good hands, out to Wilton. Wilkins kick out to the boundary line and looks for the Cutman's zone of the boundary umpire. Throw in at the 14 minute mark of the second term. It's Clarence by 10 points here. Cooney having a quiet day. Slaps it out towards Wade. Higgins bearing down, but he does it well, the veteran. Kicks it in towards the half forward plate. The wind carries it over the line and out of bounds on the full. And Craig Stevenson, the centre half back will take it for New Norfolk and what an underrated player he is he can kick it a mile gets a lot of height with that one tough one for his forwards White went with the second of it Humphreys tap out tremendous Browning caught by Jones but good enough to get the kick in King, char King charges out oh Clarence did well there Winter and Holm combined but Holm uh, uncharacteristically kicked it out of bounds on the full looks like he's having a bit of a downer today Holm he was terrific in the second semi but uh, hasn't really got near them today Hill, long kick in. They need a high mark. White the best bet. Couldn't take it in. Smith, Healy for the free kick. He's going to get it. Well, Matthew Smith, come on down. This is your life. Not only for five minutes. Has a goal at it. Grabbed. Peels for the free kick. Sucks the umpire in. He's got the kick from 12 metres out. It was very smart play, actually. One thing about Matthew Smith, he has got a very experienced head on his shoulders whilst he's only 17. He's not overly quick, he's got very good skills, he reads the game terrifically well when he thinks about his footy in a very serious manner. Let's see if he can kick straight. A lot of pressure for a 17-year-old. Directly in front, bit of work for the goal on five, but I think it's okay. New Norfolk getting closer now. 5-5-35, five, five, Clarence. The Eagles, 5-1-31. Yes, no mistake, he really summed it up pretty well. That breeze, it seems to be fluctuating. I'd be very interested to uh, to know what our meteorologist in uh, Smythe down on the boundary lines has to say about it because the sock just keeps moving from one end to the other. Forget Chris Smythe, where's Mike Poop when you need him? There's a, a free kick has been given away. McCart was being shepherded by Wright. He put Wright to ground and the umpire paid Stevie Wright the free kick. Up towards full forward. Dak can't control the ball. It's in defence. Quayle, Dak runs onto the ball again and it dribbles over the line for a boundary throw in. Can't afford to give away those sorts of free kicks in grand finals. The experience of Wright coming out there, I think Bob too, to frustrate McCartan at the centre bounce and I guess he's given away the free kick in frustration. Well, the ball underneath the pack again. Danny Noonan wrapping it up. Still a few players to get uh, make their mark on this game. McCartan beaten. Cooney couldn't control it. Morby been terrific. The ball wrapped up by Noonan. Gets it, kicks it out towards Cullen. Cullen taps it forward. He's got uh, Hull. Hull goes for a donkey ride. And the ball is going to be out of bounds on a full. So New Norfolk bring it back into play. Football terminology is changing a lot, Bob, but I don't know if it's quite ready for the old donkey ride yet. What do you think? You have to run with the times. Mike, Mike, or oh, Gary, up towards halfback. Troy White couldn't take it. Humphrey, he's done a lot of good work today. Smith off the ground and we'll have a boundary throw in at the 17 minute mark. Oh, I think it's going to pour very soon. The cloud and rain looks pretty threatening over the mountain, which has a rainbow. On it at the moment. Hull in towards full forward mark by Gurry. Must have been touched because he hand passed it away. Stevenson all under all sorts of pressure. And just the bodies just merge on the footy. Both sides absolutely desperate here today. And Stevie Wright just offering the umpire some words of encouragement. We're talking about players coming into the game, Bob. Brownless has only had one possession, one handball he's had. 
Quayle takes it out. Humphrey, who's had plenty, sees that ball once again into the comfort zone. And that's pretty significant for Clarence because you might recall a few weeks ago on the second semi, he was extra special across the half forward line where he marked everything that came his way. There it, Gurry. Good thump away. Williams couldn't control it. Holdsworth flicks it off the ground. Almost a free kick. Jones is wrapped up by uh, Blackaby. And we'll see a ball up on the George Miller side of the ground. Well, Stevie Wright asked for his players to uh, play the tiered side. They haven't been able to do it at this stage. 5-5 five, five to 5-1. Five, Clarence by four points. Noonan caught high by the looks of things. Noonan, of course, tried his luck in the AFL. Became a very good player with the Brisbane Bears for, before doing a knee. Back trying to win a flag for Clarence now. He missed out last year. Williams, the goal sneak. Snaps away. Just misses. That would have been very, very good for Clarence if he kicked that one. Doesn't normally miss there, Bob. He's under a bit of pressure, Bob. We're 18 minutes into the quarter, and uh, his player to come into this forward pocket area to give them a little bit of spark around the goals. Donato was doing okay. I'm a bit surprised to see him out of the game, but I guess Williams, the quickest player in the Clarence side, using his pace to kick a goal. I'll tell you what, the rain is not far away. Hopefully it'll arrive for half time because... Uh, it's very, very windy here and the clouds are threatening. New Norfolk somehow worked it up towards the centre wing area. No one's going to clean possession. And what is that? Holding the ball. Heard dive at young uh, Horn. And Horn has the footy on centre wing. Need a goal here now, New Norfolk, just to settle them down. They've only scored a couple in the second quarter. And they'll have a chance, will they, to bring it in? No, they won't. The winter thump right over the line. You <laughs> see the effects of the wind. And the streamers there must be good glue. Well, I might have to find another ball. No, there it comes back over the boundary line. If you have a look at the wind, sir, I think that might going to, that might uh, end up somewhere in the Derwent by the end of the day. Boundary throw in. Dean, it's on the ground. Hill on the ball. It's tucked up underneath. Matthew Jones for Clarence is the player who'll hand it back. Done a lot of work at the ground level. Hasn't been able to find much space. Richards hits the ball to the defensive side. And it's a little bit unfortunate that wind has uh, trapped the ball on that side of the ground. Back into play again. Over the back was Hull. Humphrey breaks clear. He's got space. He kicks it in towards Edwards. Edwards can't quite get to the ball. Oh, what an opportunity. Just couldn't, do you? you needed another seven centimetres, I reckon, uh, Tim Edwards, to get his hands to it. But Humphrey is starting to come back into the game. I guess the other player for you, Norfolk, Bob, that we haven't touched on is Richard Hill. He hasn't been a significant part of the, the game at this point in time, and he's the other dangerous forward on the field. Only five possessions, but importantly, hasn't been featured amongst the goal kickers. Well done about this breeze, because Bryce Kicks got straight to the centre of the ground. Beautifully marked by McCart, who's just started to gain some confidence. And remember that McCartan's only 22 years of age himself, so he'd be a bit nervous. Kicks it towards full forward. Higgins, here's a chance for Matt Smith. Can he kick another one? Holdsworth and Brian hop the shoot. Gives it away. Holdsworth stands over it. Smith dragged off it. I think Richards will see it over the line. Very close. And Jones couldn't keep it in. 5 6 36 Clarence. New Norfolk, five goals, two 32. And the very big crowd here at North Hobart Oval enjoying what's been a, a great contest. New Norfolk threatening. Denneman caught high. Not going to get a free kick. And Clarence might come out of this as Holdsworth kicks it back towards half forward. McCart knocks it away from Dean. Rove by Horn. Oh, this is a dangerous hand pass for his teammates. And Richie should pounce. Richie, he's got a little bit of space. He gets it up towards Blair Brown. As he needs to get involved in the game. And the ball taken out of play. Wilton, the player for New Norfolk, made certain of that. Well, let's be fair to Blair Brown, this ball, but very windy conditions makes it very hard for him to use his best asset, and that's his marking. The ball's been swirling around all day, and uh, the player's having difficulty kicking it to him accurately, so he can use that asset. Stevenson against Brown. Stevenson tries to take it out of the pack. So certainly wraps that ball up for another ball up. We're 22 minutes into the second quarter. Knocked forward, taken by Williams. His handball finds Stevie Wright. His snap up towards full forward, sitting in front of the pack, taking a good strong mark with Matthew Smith. And the 
Norfolk kids standing up to the pressure. It's about five teenagers in this side. They've been very, very good, as has Humphrey. Ten possessions for Paul Humphrey, and he tends to use them. Gurry now playing up in the forward line. He's the target, and he couldn't drag in the mark. So the move's been made. Pretty significant move, too, because Stevenson's picked up uh, Brownless, and, and I guess they, they feel as though they're falling down across that half forward line. They haven't done anything with Troy White. He's there, Gurry and White, the combined targets. Richard slips over. Must be a bit slippery for the players. Wade takes it. Winter in the tight corners. Holdsworth. Gee, the tackling's been good. Clarence under a pressure, and Browning emerges. Browning gets it somehow towards Hill. He loses it though. Williams there, and the foot race is on as we're into the open spaces of the centre wing. Quayle gets there first. In hot pursuit is right. Morby will probably Shepherd. Quayle locks it forward. Might work for them. Blackaby over the top of right. Almost an arm wrestle on that occasion. And thankfully we'll have a bounce. And a good quarter this by Clarence though, nonetheless. They haven't kicked a goal, but they've restricted New Norfolk for two. And we think New Norfolk is kicking with the aid of a breeze, which is very swirly. That was a terrific effort by both sides. The ball punched forward by McCartan, intercepted by Hull. His handball back to Noonan. Noonan, quick snap out towards the wing. Dean uh, Stevenson overran the ball. Brownless, an opportunity. He's got Kearney. Kearney can run the distance. He kicks it high in towards full forward. Dak six behind the pack and marks the ball. Plays on. The umpire has called time on. So he'll have to go back on a very, very acute angle. He plays on now, snaps around the corner, and he doesn't make a mistake. Yes, yeah, so they've persevered for the majority of this quarter, Clarence, and uh, hadn't scored a goal up until this point in time. Something like 24 minutes, almost 25 minutes into the quarter, approaching time on, and it's been a battle of the back lines as play seesawed up and down the ground. A very smart forward. Really does know how to go about kicking a goal. And just the one that they needed to drag themselves 10 points clear with only a couple of minutes to play in the second quarter. And if they've got the break at half time, it'll be pretty significant. Another goal for Clarence would really open up things. Stevie Wright must have a very sore head after most games because he's constantly getting caught high. And young Dean was hurting that rucking infringement. Clarence take another good mark. This is Paul Holdsworth, he's been one of their better players. They've been okay in the last five minutes to lose the reigning Premier. Holdsworth in a full forward. Where's Dak? Excellent mark taken by Matty McCartan. He used to play his footy for Colac at centre half back. He loves it back there. And my word, he's starting to have an influence on this game. Blackaby on half back, comes indoors. Morby fumbles the ball. He really needs to trap that one. You can't drop them. And the ball's wrapped up for a ball up. New Norfolk were away then. Brett Morby's been pretty good for them across the half-back line, but uh, that fumble was costly. Browning, a quick snap in towards for, uh, the centre-half forward position. Gurry took it out of the air, tried to throw it back to Horn. McCallum across to Jones. Jones's left foot was good. Up towards uh, centre-half forward, intercepting. Sproul, he's on the ground for New Norfolk. Morby, his snap in towards the centre of the ground. Gurry underneath it from behind. Hull punches it forward. Horn traps it, tries to run his distance, threw it out. Deniman taken off the ball. Appealing for free kicks is not working, and Clarence has got the ball. And they head to half ball where Cullen almost took the mark, and it's been paid. Richie trying to get 50, I think. But Clarence starting to get on top, I suspect. They lead by 10 points. In towards full forward. Kearney's lurking, but back there is Sproul. Gee, he's had a tough initiation onto the ground, hasn't he? Been involved. Gone into the defence too. Rob Quayle's come off for some unknown reason. He, he looked to me to be uh, running fairly freely as he came off, so obviously not injured. Half time of the 1994 Grand Final. What an intriguing prospect we've got for you. So stick with us. 6 6 42 Clarence, New Norfolk 5 2 32. The Eagles would probably be a little disappointed having been only down by 14 points at quarter time and then kicking with the breeze in the second term. I think you're right, Rob. The, uh, the, the deck goal in the closing stages of that quarter is the one that hurt them most. And uh, only 10 points away from it. They did it very, very well in that first quarter. All they really need to discuss at the, at the half time break 
is exactly what happened in that first quarter and not become too distracted about the school line at this point in time. They really have to focus on winning the next 30 minutes of football only. And then they can worry about the last quarter when that one comes around. But half-time break, it's going to be a physical break for them, but they really should focus on what's going to happen and how they went about that particular first quarter effort where they really did play pretty well against the Breeze to kick 3-1 and hold Clarence to five goals three. What did you make of the first half, Bob? Well, look, I think that New Norfolk uh, deserve a great deal of credit for the way in which they went about it. Uh, the Clarence side have experience, they have youth, they have a little bit more height, in my opinion. I think New Norfolk really need to get a lot more out of Troy White. Edwards has been quiet. Hill, another player has been quiet. They're three major targets up forward. Uh, look, I think the game certainly is in the balance, but uh, it's been terrific. It's been a great contest. The umpiring's been good. And I was, probably the, the only disappointing feature of the game is the, the effect that the wind is having on it. Yes, it, the wind really has uh, not wrecked the game, but spoiled the skill element of the game as the spectacle players finding it very difficult with their skills. And, and Deniman is continuing with this trend, Dave O, of addressing the players on the field. I suppose it's a real opportunity for them to uh, just be together as a group of 20, perhaps five guys, a bit of your support staff as well. And perhaps it's one of the only few moments you get. Well, it's an important time too, you know, rather than players wander off in dribs and drabs like Brown's cows, as we often see them do, I think it's important that, uh, you know, particularly on big days, that you've got uh, everybody together and there's that feeling of unity, you know, that you see there in the Clarence rooms. The players, there's Donato, taken off the ground and replaced by Sean Williams. Not too many other people outside of the, uh, the coaching staff, the players and the ancillary staff in that particular Clarence change room. And then your Norfolk boys going off. They'd be pretty happy. One problem, to Bob, that you might like to talk about, in recent finals, they haven't had good last halves. They've been very ordinary. Only kicked two in the two goals after half-time in the qualifying final. Were only able to kick six in the last half last week when they got over the top of Sandy Bay. Well, looking at the goals there, right, Dak, two apiece, Richie and Donato with the others. Blackaby, Edwards, King, Smith and Eisen share the goals for New Norfolk. So it's been a, a good spread of goals, but importantly, uh, I mean, Edwards has one goal, but he is their full forward. And uh, Hill, who's been very, very good for uh, New Norfolk all year as a, an opportunist on the forward line, he's yet to uh, get on the scoreboard. So he's a problem, and I agree with you, Gary, that their last half has been a serious problem. And uh, the form of uh, uh, Paul Humphrey and Deniman in the second half are keys. Here's the statistics, fellas, and take us through these, Gary. Well, not a lot's changed, Rob, since uh, I think there's six positions of difference at quarter time. There's only five in favour of New Norfolk, 35 hand passes each. Three kicks in favour of Clarence, and uh, I reckon Stevie Wright's probably got half of those. Uh, seems to do very well from the umpires when the ball's on the ground, the experience factor coming out there. The hit-out's in favour of New Norfolk, but I think young Dean has done extraordinarily well, Adrian Dean. Hurt at one of the centre bounces uh, towards the end of the quarter, but I believe he's been a very significant contributor at that centre bounce and around the ground for, you know, for the Clarence side. That's the statistics. Here's the New Norfolk dressing room. We've got uh, cameras everywhere here today. We've got about 13 of them. The lipstick camera in there in the dressing room. Doesn't tell us much, does it? A lot of kids there. Interesting haircuts. And the players buried away in the dressing rooms deep. A lot of colour in the New Norfolk dressing room. They can be pretty happy with their efforts. They trail by 10 points. You think that half of footy was good? Have a look at this. We've got a collection of the marks of the year. And stick with us. We'll be back with more commentary live from the 1994 TFL Grand Final.